So how many of you out there watching this have an audio system that you spent a good amount of money on, a good amount of time on, and that you enjoy, but you might listen to it one day and it sounds heavenly, it sounds sublime, it sounds as you would expect it to sound, and you're happy as a clam with that system. You might go in a couple days later and it sounds different to you, not as good as it did from your memory as a couple nights or days prior, and you're not sure what's going on. You might go in on a third day and it sounds so different and off that you think something's wrong with the system. Now, a lot of people think that phenomenon is our ears, our moods, and, and I always thought that could be part of it. And I used to have this happen with my system, no matter the level of system, whether it was a low cost or uber high cost system, such as in my reference system. Ever since adding the 1200, the Niagara 1200, it's been consistent. I have not had those days where it sounds off, where it sounds like something's wrong. And to me, that is the biggest improvement that I have seen across the board with the Niagara 1200 in my reference system. I no longer have those inconsistent days where it doesn't sound right. It always sounds its best. And that's probably the highest praise that I can give to the Niagara besides the surge protecting features the build quality, the looks, and that little bit of extra life it does give to the music. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I wanna to talk about power conditioning is it snake oil in the world of high-end audio? A lot of people call power conditioning snake oil because these days many power conditioner, many power products are sold with the promise that your sound will improve. Reviewers state you will hear more micro details. The noise floor will drop to a vanishingly low level, therefore allowing more of the detail, more of the information within those musical files is presented to our ears. That's what's been said about these devices over the years. And today I wanna to talk about something I bought to try in my reference system. Now, many of you know I've been building a reference system for a while now. One thing that was missing was power conditioning. Um, I did not have any kind of power conditioner, power regenerator. All I was using in that reference system was I believe a, it was $25 on Amazon I bought maybe nine years ago, a big long power strip, nothing fancy, not audiophile, it's basic, has a built-in power cord, and I had everything plugged into that because I only have two AC outlets in my listening room available to where all my equipment is. So I had to have this power strip and I had my amps plugged in, which are monoblock amps right now, my preamp, my streamer, my DAC, Everything was plugged in to this big, long, generic, cheap, inexpensive power strip, yet I was happy with the music playing through this power strip. But somebody sent me a message and said, with that reference system, you really should have a power conditioner. And even if you don't believe in the idea that it can improve your system sound quality, you should have one just for the fact that you need a high capacity, a high power, a highly regarded surge protector in your system so your equipment doesn't get damaged if it's you have a lightning strike or a massive power surge. And I was saying, you know, that's right. I really do need something that offers a little bit of high quality protection. Furman makes some really good power conditioners. Shunyata makes power conditioners. AudioQuest makes power conditioners. Many companies these days make power conditioners from low end to high end, and the sky's the limit as with anything in high end audio. I managed, or I decided to go for, my wallet managed to go for the AudioQuest 1200. Now, this power conditioner is 12, I think 1299, and it does not come with a power cord. Nope, these hi-fi power conditioners, these glorified fancy power strips as some call them, do not even come with a power cord. AudioQuest recommends 
one of its own power cords, one of its own fancy power cords, of course. And after reading and researching, a lot of people found happiness and Nirvana with the Blizzard power cord from AudioQuest. It's not in their low end. It's not in their crazy high end. It's somewhere in the 30 to 40th percentile up that quality ladder. I bought a Niagara 1200, a Blizzard power cable, and the set came in at around $2,000. And this is for uh, what is basically, some are calling a power strip, right? To safeguard my equipment. Um, that's one thing that this product will do. It's a non-sacrificial, uh, it acts as a non-sacrificial surge protector. So that means if I have a high uh, a lightning strike or a massive surge, it's going to shut down the Niagara 1200. It's going to shut down itself, I should say. And it's not going to allow any power to your system. It's going to keep your system safe. And it's not going to harm itself. Uh, it's not going to destroy itself in the process of protecting your gear. It's non-sacrificial. So when that surge is over, the Niagara will come back to life and work just as well as it did before that surge. Truth be told, that's what I wanted, something in my system pr to protect, to help protect the gear. And there's other routes you can go, whole home surge protectors. There's so many different routes you can go for protecting your gear. But the thing with the AudioQuest Niagara series is a lot of reviewers, a lot of reviews, a lot of people who buy it. I'd say nine out of 10 who buy it claim there's a sound improvement to their system that something just locks into place when they have clean power coming out of the wall. Now, it's a fact. A lot of our electricity, at least in America, depending on where you live, is dirty. It's noisy. It does bring all kinds of nasties into the electrical line. But these days, most high-end equipment is built to filter out that noise. In high-end, we pay that extra money for things such as uh, noise suppression and these devices usually have sophisticated things built into them to keep the noise level out that's why in reviews of preamps and amps and DACs you hear the backgrounds were velvety black because there's no noise getting in so why do we need something like a Niagara 1200 or a 3000 or a 5000 or a 7000 um, well I'll tell you what happened when I took out my cheap long power strip and replaced it with the Niagara 1200 being powered by AudioQuest's own Blizzard power cable. Uh, I plugged everything into the AudioQuest and what I like about the Niagara 1200, I used to have the 1000 when it was a thing years ago and I didn't like the design of it. It was big and bulky and chromed out and shiny and it was just unruly and I didn't like the looks of the 1000. And at the time, I thought the 1000 in my system back then didn't really do much for sound. In my system at the time, I found it to be a little glaring or add a little teeny bit of glare and I didn't like it. So I ended up taking it out of that system and again, using a generic power strip. Now the 1200 is much better designed than the 1000. It's sleeker, it's more attractive, it's heavy, um, it's solid, it looks like uh, a, a piece of equipment. It looks like a high-end DAC. It looks like it could be uh, a, a component in your high-end system. And I like the way that the uh, outlets are laid out on the back. You have five outlets for your source components, your digital components, say your preamp, your DAC, your streamer, your turntable, and you have two high current uh jacks on the back that you plug in your amplifiers to or some people will plug in a subwoofer i plugged both of the past labs xa 60.8 mono blocks into the high current plugs and i plugged all of my source components into the other five plugs now when i turned on the system um, i really wasn't expecting anything major in the sound quality to change and i was correct there was no major change in the sound quality um i did hear a difference in the sound quality it was ever ever so slight now i'm talking maybe three to five percent i'm not talking a night and day difference 
As a matter of fact, unless you have a really revealing system, I don't think you will hear the differences of a Niagara power conditioner. But as I left it in, I, I noticed this slight difference. And one night I was like, it's not sounding as organic and bloomy and warm and welcoming as I remember. So I took out the Niagara 1200 and I plugged back in my big old ugly cheap power strip. And when I did that, I noticed, now this is after about a week and a half of listening to the Niagara 1200. When I put back in the old cheap power strip, there was a definite difference in the sound. Again, small, but my system is very revealing. Um, but it became more muted, uh, more dull. And I was like, well, that's strange. All I did was take out the Niagara 1200. I listened for about three days like that. And then I went back to the Niagara and I heard that, again, that slight uplifting in the energy, in the liveliness, in the dynamics, in the top end. And as I listened one night with the Niagara, everything just sounded so well composed, tight, clean, and there was zero noise in my system. Um, it just sounded like everything was snapped into place and everything came together and it was sounding as good as I've heard it sound. But I wanted to do more tests. So I left the Niagara in for another week and then uh, I took it out again and I plugged back in my old power strip. The same thing happened. It went from lively, snappy, dynamic, um, very well composed to slightly more muted, slightly duller. Everything just took a step down. So there is definitely, without question, a difference in sound in resolving systems when you use one of these power conditioners. Again, very, very slight. Um, because of the build quality of the Niagara 1200, because of how good it looks and feels, because it's actually doing a job and protecting equipment, and it's a non-sacrificial um, surge protector, um, I, I struggled with returning it or keeping it. I ultimately decided listening at one in the morning uh, one night that I liked the sound a little better with the audio quest in it just had that little bit more of dynamic snap and i did prefer it with it in the system i also like the looks the design the build quality and the fact that it's going to protect my equipment so is that worth two thousand dollars with that blizzard power cord um for me it is because the cost invested in my reference system is pretty plentiful um my Fleetwood DeVille speakers are 15K. The amps I'm running right now, I believe, are $13,000. The preamp is $5,800. The streamer is $2,000. The DAC is $1,700. The cables are thousands of dollars. So I have a lot invested in this system. So it makes sense for me. It would probably make sense for me to go to the Niagara 3000, right? Or even 5000. But I feel the 1200 is just right for my system. I don't, I'm not suffering in the dynamics department. My amps don't sound congested or choked or cut off from current. In fact, they sounded a little more, they sounded better, beefier, as I said, more dynamic by a slight margin plugged into the AudioQuest Niagara 1200. At $12.99, it's not cheap, but if you have a revealing system, if you have money invested in your audio system, if you want peace of mind that your system's going to be protected uh, and your power cleaned and your power does get cleaned, some of you will notice a much bigger effect in your system than I have because my power is pretty good here. Um, but if you have really noisy power, if you have components that put out some buzzing or humming or hissing the audio quest may or may not help you i've read reports from people who said it helped with those things and others say it did not but i bought mine from amazon using prime and i knew i had 30 days to return it so i took that offer of return i tried it out and i ultimately have decided to keep it because of the protection 
the quality of the piece and the fact that it does do a little bit to enhance the sound quality in my reference system. But you have people out there who say these make no difference in sound quality. It's nothing more than an expensive surge protector. Um, for me, that wasn't the case. It did improve the sound quality a little bit. And believe me, I spent three and a half weeks going back and forth because I didn't want to have to spend that money to keep it. I, I was going to return it, but it did what it claimed to do for the most part. I didn't hear a night and day difference. I didn't hear macro details appearing out of nowhere where they weren't there before. Again, I did hear a slight improvement in the treble region, in the dynamics, and in the life and sparkle of the system. But like I said, three to 5% difference, very small. I would buy a Niagara to clean up my electrical system, to give my system the lowest noise floor it can possibly have, because when you have the lowest noise floor, when you have the least amount of electrical noise and grit and grunge coming into your system, that's when you hear the details better. That's when the music is more composed and the music flows better through the speakers. That is when everything clicks into place. Let's forget about guys like me and others that review gear. Look at the owner's reviews of this thing. No matter what online shop you go to that sells this, the reviews are stellar. I'd say nine out of 10 who buy this thing love it and swear by it and that tells you everything you need to know. Look at the people who spend their hard-earned money on a product to see what they're saying about it. And if the overall majority is saying the same thing, there's something to those reports, which leads me to the professional reviews. They are all pretty much spot on with the AudioQuest Niagara series of power conditioners. Some go a little over the top, some hype the products to no end, I'm not here to hype it or tell you it's the best thing that's gonna go into your system. I am here to tell you that power quality is important in a high-end, highly resolving audiophile system, but most of the gear in that price range filters out most of that noise to begin with. The AudioQuest Niagara series can filter out that little bit more without constricting your amplifiers and at the same time, giving protection to your expensive components and gear. It's built to a high standard, so much better than that old 1000. Uh, I'm happy I bought it. I'm happy it has a home in my reference system. I don't feel I need to go to the 3000 or 5000 because the 1200 does everything I need it to do. Uh, if you're interested in reading more about the Niagara uh, 1200 or the power cable or any of that, I'll put a link in the description below, um, which will actually take you to my website for more information. Uh, so I thank you all, I love you all, and I will see you next time.